videos back again nice to see you joining back in today i have a repeat guest which i also want to record for my podcast which will be season one episode two uh we have the no one other than ivan Munyengago. i think you've seen him before uh in, in one of my other videos well today uh because we are in kind of like semi lockdown ish state i thought i'll just record a nice long video talking about the current state of uh, rwanda but also more specifically about uh health related stuff uh because we're both into the fitness uh industry so i guess it's good to talk with you pierre to see what's what's going on um, and also we were talking about the new marijuana uh, production of, in Rwanda that has been allowed. Um, just to get some different uh, perspective, because I think I have a very unique perspective coming from a country where marijuana has been legalized for, for many years. So I lived in that environment for 20 years, basically. So it's fun to see how uh, it's, it's going to be moving to Rwanda and anything else that actually happens along the way. All right, sit back, relax. Don't forget to subscribe and uh, leave a comment down below. If we if we did not talk about the subject uh, long enough, for example, uh, I'll always continue in the comment sections below. And Ivan also might contribute as well. So if you have a specific question for him, put it in the comment section below. All right, reka to tangire. Ivan, cheers. Yes. Thank you for joining our podcast number two. Thank you for your invite. So first of all, how are you feeling? Like shit. <laughs> oh. No, I feel good. I feel good. Yeah. Compared to um, last a couple last couple of days, mm-hmm. I've been uh, a bit sick ish. Yeah. Um. Of well, it's something undiagnosed. My 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 results were all negative. Yeah. Covid blood stool anything mm-hmm. you can mention yeah but then uh, my doctor said that it may be a burnout or something like that so i the solution was to just take time away from what i normally do on a daily basis yeah and the government helped by closing the business so <laughs> it's a good coincidence yeah so that's actually one of the things i wanted to talk to you about today um you know seeing you, you and us where, where we are like we train people for a living we make people healthy and uh, we do not always take good care of ourselves in that process. Yeah, I think so, yeah. yeah, inevitably, right? Because we we love this whole movement, the whole sector. But once you start working in, into it, then you kind of lose on on your own uh, yeah, department. Well, it's funny that you say indeed about um, a, a burnout, because that's what happened to me actually in the first lockdown. When the first lockdown happened, I was very very tired. Really, I had like one month left in me. Yeah. And then when the lockdown hit, man, I was tired. Yeah. Like, you know, you, you have enough work, you can't get up. You, you cannot be bothered, basically. So how have you, how did you, um, like, how, how, how you, you as a health expert, how is it that you're not able to kind of like signal those, those, you know, to find those signals in yourself, basically, before it's... Uh, yeah. Before, well, yeah, I mean, it's... Um... I mean, at the end of the day, I'm a human as well. Yeah. So, and then we're not really clever at uh, diagnosing ourselves. Yeah. That's uh, that's uh, that's a fact. Yeah. So, we do wake up every day. We put in all these long hours trying yeah. to make other people's healthy, other people healthy. But uh, uh, at some point, uh, the hours, the the long working hours, the the time on the floor the night out um, or, or i mean the staying up late yeah. all those things when you combine them at, at, and then you put them on a, a certain period of time yeah um your biology cannot deal with that it will break if you don't take a break it will remind you that uh you need a break yeah. so i think mm-hmm. that happens to me a couple of times in a year mm. and um uh, i should be clever i should be wiser to 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 take off time off before yeah. before I'm reminded by my biology. Yeah. But uh, I I guess I'm not really good at it. Yeah. But uh, it is very important to always assess how you feel and see your productivity whether you are still performing at the same level as a personal trainer or as a health practitioner of uh, what sort. Yeah. Um, to know if you because if you're healthy yourself, uh, then the quality of what you're giving is also at a higher standard. So. 
Yeah, yeah, I can't agree. Uh, so for the people maybe who are just watching it for the first time or not seen Ivan and on, on my previous video, Ivan is the CEO of Kali Fitness, basically the, the gym where my gym is kind of uh, incubated in. So we kind of work close together even though we're kind of doing our own thing. So, but yes, you do notice that when, you know, when you're six o'clock there, when I'm there at six o'clock, Ivan usually is also there. Afternoon, he's basically anytime when I go to the gym, 90% chance that I'm going to meet Ivan there. Um, and, and, you know, next to that, of course, he's also a personal, a personal trainer. He is a father. And uh, yeah, what else is actually interesting about you? I think we talked a whole lot about you the last time. If anyone wants to know more about Ivan. Um, so, um, in this... You know, when, when, when you are like uh, helping others, before I entered, you know, this, this sector, I always knew like I need to take care of myself. Uh, but now that I'm actually helping other people, I'm kind of realizing like, oh shit, that, you know, taking a break and doing the thing that I'm telling these people to do actually makes sense. I need to actually um, like, like do that. So my question to you, since you mentioned the word like um, a burnout, have you ever had a burnout before? I have, yeah, yeah, yeah. I have before, and um, um, it's uh, it's really it's like I said, it's it's not really a wise uh, thing uh, to to do. Yeah. To exhaust yourself to a point where you actually uh, you're asked by your body to 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 put on a break in, yeah. in everything you're doing. Um, when you look at uh, at my life, the way you were describing how we meet on the gym floor at the time. Uh, I have clients from six o'clock in the morning. That requ that requires me to wake up at five. Mm -hmm. So at five, if you call me, I'll pick up a call because I will, I have my phone listening to podcasts, making eggs and odd me on in the kitchen. I have a routine I have been doing for years, and uh, uh, so at at five uh, thirty-five, I yeah. get in the car, I start driving to work. So I can have clients. Uh, uh, six to seven people in the morning yeah. and that takes me to 1 a.m. to yeah. 1 p.m. and then I go take a break of two hours and then I'll come back at 4 p.m. have clients again up to 8 p.m. or, mm -hmm. or 7 p.m. so people who come because they only have uh, that window they train which yeah. is an hour um, uh, they don't put that into perspective they don't know actually my life outside their training session <laughs> so my life has other people like them and yeah. uh, and there are many yeah, and, and, and those people change. So the ones that come on Monday don't come back on Tuesday. Mm -hmm. So I have the ones that come on my, from, from Monday to Wednesday and Friday. Yeah. And then those 11 or 12 people will change. And then I will have another 12 people on a Tuesday, mm -hmm. Thursday, and Saturday. So, and then um, I, on Saturday, I work seven hours and then I take uh, the afternoon off. Yeah. So I can put on, I can let that go on and on for like four or five months yeah and if i do that uh of course adding in a couple of social things happening in the weekend here and there and then my my parent responsibilities and uh any other thing i'm i'm an extrovert so i'm always i jump on an outdoor activities that's happening yeah, here exactly, and there yeah. um yeah, you will realize that um the eight hours they talk about of sleeping it's <laughs> kind of a myth in my life it's sometimes now has changed my rhythm. I, I, I really don't even stretch to that much anymore. How, how many hours do you sleep on, on, on average? I would say four to five. So what time do you go to bed then? Uh, 11, 30, like that. That's yeah. late, man. 11, 30, four, I'm, I'm up. Yeah. yeah. Usually I have an alarm, but it serves no purpose. Uh. It, it, it rings when I'm in the bathroom. <laughs> so. Well, yeah, I mean, I mean okay, for me... I, I, I tried that, but ever since I had the, uh, you know, the burnout scare, basically, I, you know, I, I, I started changing it around to be more health conscious. So I, I started like really purposely taking like a day off in the week, like I'll book from six to like eight. I'll just like mark it like taken. Yeah. You know, just to sleep in. Because, you know, when you wake up at, at 4 or 5 every day, when you wake up at 7, you feel like you've slept. You've slept through. You feel like you've, yeah, yeah. you've, you've actually quite rested but then don't you ever get hit with those like afternoon tiredness when you feel like you have to take a nap i do when i'm home this is uh if you ask my wife she has a very interesting take on this mm -hmm. so every time i'm at home yeah it counts as the time i'm at home 
because yeah. what you can imagine if you're married and you have a partner yeah uh, the time to be home is very important mm -hmm. but then the quality of the time to be home is all even more yeah. important yeah. it's not like you are there dead yeah, you, 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 you have to be there present yeah so you can actually be useful mm -hmm. uh, I'm talking about talking to your kid yeah uh, going through like a couple of plays yeah. maybe reading a book maybe chat with your partner yeah. maybe do a little bit in the kitchen cook some meal that you know you both enjoy like be actually useful yeah but i realized that um every time i'm at home i'm actually not useful i'm like <laughs> <laughs> You're dead. i'm like i'm like dead yeah so they get me when i'm not uh, uh helpful in, yeah. in any ways and and it's something i don't like but i'm working towards being really uh, better at uh prioritizing myself and uh and 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 yeah yeah i, I usually have uh, it's like seasons yeah. where i'm like crazy 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 busy and then other seasons where i can prioritize myself yeah luckily so i'm i'm, I'm only living with my girlfriend alone and then when i come home indeed um it's like i usually come home at like around 10 ish yeah and then it's like okay i'll eat breakfast maybe <laughs> if i'm not eating breakfast and then literally i'll just go to bed yeah. Like you like you said, like but me, you know, there's not much else to do. It's only my girlfriend, so I just go to bed, and then I wake up at around twelve thirty one. Yeah. And then I'm hungry again. It's 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 lunch time. Yeah. And then you eat, and then because you're right when you say you're dead, because that's all. That's I try to push through. I realize that there's not really much that you can do. You you're not you're not sociable. You're not focused. Um, yeah, and even just calling people, you know, fixing stuff around the house. You just feel like. I've had better days yeah. um, to do it. Uh, but anyway, so one of the things I want to talk about is the current state of Rwanda. So right now, we are in July when we're recording this. Yeah. Uh, Rwanda has gotten into its second most stringent measurements, I would say, right? Next to full lockdown, this is the, the one that follows. Yeah. Curfew is at 6 p.m. <laughs> Shops are open. The shows that are allowed to open and, and are allowed to work at 50% and can work up to 5 and after 5 they all have to close. So it really feels like a semi-lockdown. Even now that yeah. we're having this interview, we should be mindful of the time so that we don't... Have time to, to, to make it home. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So it's all during the day. Um, um, but in a way, uh, like how has this uh, lockdown of corona restriction been for you because it's been now well, like 18 months that we, we are we are in it yeah and um i think have you have you left the country in, in those 18 I, months i haven't so and okay. that's the most the, the yeah part yeah. of the crazy part yeah yeah that's the crazy I, I i was able to get out for like five weeks from mm. you know um and, and traitor. I, yeah, yeah i know that makes you a traitor yeah. i know, you know living, you know, living us you know also the funny thing when i went out it was it was the first time they put the, the curfew at seven it was people were like going crazy oh my god seven mm -hmm. how are we gonna live you know um, but it was it was such a breathtaking that you, you realize okay listen even though the Rwanda you know measurements are this strict just going to another country and having their deal with their issues is still better than staying in the same shit yeah, yeah, yeah. that you've been into it so how has it has been for you like what kind of like toll do you feel like it has taken uh, on you it's, uh, it's been tough it's been tough because if you are in a situation that's limited the way it's limited I mean on the personal uh, at the personal level, I, I, I feel like people who are wired the way I'm wired, they usually hide themselves in work. Yep. And then sometimes work gets to be paused. Yeah. Not because you want, but because uh, because of the health emergencies, like, like the situation we're into now. And uh, and that's, yeah, then you're obliged to like go home, put everything on break and, mm -hmm. uh, and, and, and not do anything. Yeah. So it's tough. Mm -hmm. um, of course, uh, financially because you get to spend a lot of time without working without an income yeah and also we haven't been able usually every year i during that little break of two to three weeks i take um i get to visit places yeah. i get to go to denmark and visit my family-in-law yeah i get to take my kids to see things and uh, but uh, this time every time we wanted to plan something either there are travel restrictions yeah. or um, let's say if it involves our parents in my parents in law, then they were not vaccinated and they, we, we were very fortunate enough that if you live in Rwanda, probably that work in an environment where you meet a lot of people, you probably are vaccinated yeah at this point with both shots and but then in Denmark, it wasn't the case when we wanted to go there. Uh, mm -hmm. I was like, I'm not going to risk uh, putting the 
elders in danger yeah. when uh, when you, yeah so that that, that that has been the reasons not to move not to move, and yeah. uh yeah but uh yeah, I'm looking forward to my to my summer getaway. This time I have it planned. And, uh, it's not gonna. <laughs> no, yeah, yeah. You, you should even now that we're re recording this, we're do doing it in, in Honor Motel, and um, I purposely booked this time because uh, two months ago was my birthday, and then I took it like a, a getaway in a, in a hotel, yeah. and I realized, oh my god, I actually need this thing, yeah, because uh, like your mental, you know, even though we're training our body, right. I I I I have really now that, that our mental state has been challenged. You realize how important it is. Actually, it, it even goes up almost above your 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 uh, your physical state. If yeah, you're yeah. mentally sharp, you can get things done. Yeah, yeah. You you can protect yourself. Oh, but if you yeah. if you're mentally not sharp, man, you know it's it's like it's it's worthless. I mean, yeah. for me, I try to work out in the gym, and then you just feel like you have all these weights, all this room in front of me. Yeah. have access to a gym with a key I can go there and but still ah, man it, 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 you're not in the right headspace to always train exactly that's the, that's the and, but, but yeah. the th you know why, why to me it was like a, a red flag because training has always been my safe haven mm -hmm. my thing to open my mind like you know all the crazy business idea I get them when I'm training yeah. you know when I think about okay I'm gonna record this I'm gonna, it's always during training yeah. so once that safe haven got taken away from me yeah. ah man I, won't, I was like no, no there's something wrong something's not right so that's why I purposely you know made the investment to take more breaks to feel like you've relaxed and get out of your environment basically to kind of uh, chill out yeah. Um, so another thing I want to talk about about you. So um, well, I, th I don't think anyone is really talking about it, and I, I thought you uh, you and I maybe are the right people. So the the the, the corona restrictions that have happened, you know, I know they have affected everyone. Yeah. But I would say, and I think you would agree that the gym sector has been hit particularly, uh, you know, like specific. I would yeah, say, yeah, right? Yeah. Quite hard. Yeah. Yeah. Like in compared to other things, and maybe next to gyms, the bars. Bars are the only things mm. that are not allowed to open. But after bars, it looks like gyms were the ones who have really been put down through yeah. all measurements. Yeah. Personally, I just have a question, like, who is making these rules? Um, but what, what is your take on it? Why do you think that the gym sector has been, been restricted so heavily so from the get-go? So heavily to, to this point. Uh, um, I think, uh, first of all, it's not just in Rwanda. Yeah. It's yeah, the whole true. world. Yeah. Um, the first, I mean, you, it's very ironic, actually, when you think about it. The, we are in a sanitary emergency, yeah. and the threat we have uh, is dealing with our immune system. Yeah. It is questioning the quality of your health. Mm -hmm. And then one of the solutions is to actually close the first thing that actually gives people better health. Yeah. I mean, of course, because of the environmental uh, reasons, like the way a gym is and the... the, the, the the setup and, and, and everything, but I, I, I think the solutions shouldn't be in always closing yeah. every time you, 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 you have fear of people gathering and people breathing together. And mm -hmm. I, I feel like the solution ha, ha, should have been at the policy level, repurposing the buildings uh, gyms uh, operate in yeah. or asking gym owners to like think about a model that can actually work with the virus because it's a year plus and it, people it still need to exercise instead of closing. Uh, among other things that are very essential, I feel like, I feel like exercise should be uh, that untouchable thing that you need to always find a way to work around yeah. uh, instead of always think about it as, as, as closing. So, of course, um, country to country, it mm -hmm. differs. And um, uh, we're in a small African country historically that's a bit conservative so yeah. we have our way we go with with yeah. exercise in terms of culture we it's an issue we we, we deal with very conservatively very. uh at the at, at that individual level you ask somebody do you exercise uh i don't have time yeah that's like a universal answer but then what a european or an american means by i don't have time could actually be that they don't have time and there is no dismissal, there is no demeaning mm -hmm. underlying explanation to that. Yeah. In Rwanda, when an older 55-year-old man tells you that I don't have time, it's like, 
I have A, B, C, D that rank high in my priorities okay. and exercise really is yes, low. Yeah. If I happen to do it, because it is also quote in quote called imni dagaduro, like entertainment. Yeah. So, and yeah, you know, that's... our parents, our grandparents are not really known for that. <laughs> so they feel like it's something that the youth should go and play with. And, yeah. uh, and it's something, if you already frame it that way, it's something you should do when you have time. And it's like there are grown up work to do and I have no time to exercise. So the culture played a big role and it's not just in everyday uh, common people, it's mm -hmm. in the uh, authorities as well, people who yeah. take decisions. Yeah. So because they are the humans we are talking about, they are in the age category we're talking about, they are the people who have a conservative view of, mm -hmm. of, 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 of exercise in, in life. They of course understand that Training, exercising is healthy or doing this. So, but uh, there is, I mean, you can also break it down to an individual and then see how many of them exercise. Uh, you can count them. Or when yeah, they exercise, is, what do they do? Is it impactful? Is it? And our, probably, probably not. We know these people that you're talking about. And we know also the level of education that they have of sports as a, like an essential good is very yeah. uh, like uh, limited i would say but just to give like a take a, a recap of the gym restrictions basically that that, that we've been through right so march uh, 8th uh, 2020 that's when we got our first covid case yeah, yeah. Not, notified in rwanda right and about a week later on the 14th of march 2020 we, we went into our first lockdown and then Two months late in May, yeah. that's when um, things started to open up a bit. You know, motorcycles were allowed to go around a bit. Some shops were allowed to open. And then in August, which is five months later, the airport reopened. Uh, and then at the end of November, a miracle happened. The gyms were allowed to open. Yeah. And then we were like, okay, under strict measurements, we started, we, we complied, we did everything. It took like a week or so at least to comply to all the measurements that required us. But only to wake up to like a week later that oh, gyms are closing again, and then we went into basically full yeah the gym closing in the mid of December again, and up to May twenty twenty one. Yeah. That's when the gyms were again allowed to open under another strict measures, yeah. of which the last one we had is that now people have to take a COVID test. That is that to show they have taken a COVID test in the last seven days in order for them to enter a gym. Yeah. And then only to hear like in 1st of July, oh, gyms are closing again. So in the, according to my calculation at least, we, in the last 16 months or so, the gym has been open maybe two or three months. Um, the decision makers are the people maybe you are talking about who are maybe not, do not, they view gyms as entertainment, as fun stuff for children to do, uh, yeah. you know, uh, play uh, 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 around. But us as people who actually work in this sector and know what we're doing, we cannot disagree more, right? It's like this is should be one of the essential things that people should be go going ab about. Yeah. Uh, so my question is like how, because uh, we know these people. These are the older people, the, the powerful people. Yeah. They're like our parents basically. You know, as a Rwandan, you cannot just go and talk to your father, to your mother, to your aunt, like, hey, yeah. listen, <laughs> I studied this, I know. But how still we, we need them and they need us. How do you think we can break this cycle? I, I of, think, of, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, that's, a, that's a good um, uh, uh, question, especially going forward. Uh, going forward? Yeah, because yeah. We because still, there will be, we're in, we're in a pandemic and God knows, maybe this is the first. Maybe there will be, <laughs> there will be more, yeah. But as a, as a community, uh, uh, Rwandans really, um, uh, the good thing is that at the policy level now, they are understanding this. Do you but think then, so? Uh, they, when you look at things being put in place, like uh, uh, there is, uh, uh, um, when I was, um, um, I write about this stuff and, and I, I write articles and, 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 and I talk to people when I'm fetching for uh, ingredients to put in, yeah. in, in what I publish. Uh, then uh, some of the findings are very actually, I'm always like, wow, okay, I didn't know this is actually happening. I didn't know this is in place. So yeah. there are things, um, although they're not really, I don't know about the canalization of, of, of I, I feel like things should be very uh, clear, not be taken. We have, um, uh, I want to mention to, 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 to talk about something, but I don't want to, to go away from your question. I, I'll come back to it. So we have a very, um, um, we have a very busy uh, health system. 
Yes. It's putting in place in, uh, we, it's making sure that uh, the, the sick get help, mm -hmm. the diagnosis come in time, and it's covering, of course, uh, every disease and, uh, and every uh, malfunction that exists. So everybody, make, uh, it's making sure that every Rwandan gets help, gets assistance, yeah. gets medical support, and it's dealing with hospitals and ambulances and uh, teaching at the same time and... and external relations and and it's a very busy uh, uh health system yeah but i feel like as we are busy doing that because all those things are pre uh, are reactive stuff it's yeah. like we have an issue now we are working on solving it yeah but i feel like there should be polarity there should be a system a preventive healthcare system mm -hmm. that's working together with that parallelly that takes care of future uh 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 diseases but the magic and, word is the preventive what you said right the magic word is preventive yeah. of course rbc has like a a, a, a non-communicable disease uh, department yeah. they deal with this stuff they yeah. do uh, behavior change campaigns so that people can yeah, exactly. disassociate themselves with like yeah. bad lifestyles that lead to ncds or there are there is a rwanda health association the uh, um, heart association there is the non-communicable disease uh, alliance there is mm -hmm. the, there are a lot of stakeholders and other ngos in this uh, 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 area yeah. uh, into doing things that you can feel like they are for preventive purposes yeah. like when you are doing all these campaigns in the rural area with like road shows and for behavior change purposes yeah it, it's good but it is addressing issues that are already here yeah i feel like um uh, we should go further into into this, especially at the policy level, and address issues like how do we let uh, things that have gotten the West as miserable in terms of public health as it is today, yeah. uh, things like McDonald's and KFCs and, and, and uh, all yeah. these fast food uh, chains, yeah. they're opening doors one after another. Yeah. How do we not regulate the entry of this bad stuff that we're coping? I understand that it represents investment that we we uh, really need but um, we also have to think about where it will leave our, our people once we want to get rid of it it will be yeah. too late we will be so deep in bed with them and, and it will be so hard to get rid of them the same way uh, now you can wake up and say I don't want Coca-Cola in my country it's it's not just that easy yeah regardless <laughs> of whatever country you are so but we are yeah, yeah we are a very at a very interesting point where we are very ambitious as a country we want to grow we want investments to come in we want to move forward yeah but how can we actually go the healthy way like how can we so pick how, the how, necessary and ignore the not necessary although they may seem to to have like quick results or they may look good on paper or they may but in terms of substance i i feel like we should really filter more so how do we change in this mindset of the people who are right now in charge, we know that they may not have this big affiliation with sports. Yeah. Uh, or maybe not even that. Let's just say they're maybe even misinformed. Because let's be honest, the PP, That's gym, a... gym here equals aerobics. Yeah. Um, and anything else is something you... you that's another to topic that's very sensitive yeah. to my ears. Uh, sports. Yeah. Sports. We all love sports. Yeah. Uh, if you're lucky, you played sports and you know how important it is to your health. Yeah. But... Uh, when we talk about, there are words that are thrown in things and then they don't necessarily mean the same thing. Yeah. I wish it was very, very clear that sports, fitness, health, yeah. uh, what else? Um, those things don't mean the same thing. No. Let's, let, let me remove other things and then keep sports and fitness. Those two things are very different. Yeah. If you ask somebody... Who went for a jog in the morning and then come back at home what were you doing i tried to reach you on the phone ah, i was doing sports mm -hmm. but then when you hear about what they were doing they went for a run yeah of course if you if if that if what you were doing involved other people mm -hmm. and if there were prices and it was a competition and if there were prices involved mm -hmm. that's a sport yeah but if it the, the sole purpose of a sport is entertainment yeah. That's that's how we fall into the entertainment category. Fitness is not sports. 
There is of course new trends like CrossFit. Those are trying to create a sport around fitness. Yeah, yeah, exactly. But that's a sport where now you go and watch people do fitness as entertainment. Then you can be entertained when you look at Mark Fraser doing or, or Brooke Wells clean and jerk uh, a million pounds. You can't really imagine. Mm -hmm. Then you are entertained by that idea, yeah. and it's being done by a fit person. Yeah. But when you, with the kind of fitness we do in the gym, in our everyday life, the kind of fitness I want Mrs. and Mr. Karimba uh, to, to do, I want them to be uh, all around fit and to be functional mm -hmm. uh, fit and to be ready to just face life yeah. as, as it is. And uh, I'm not putting them at the level of competing at the Olympics. I'm not <laughs> pairing them with anyone else so that they can compete and definitely they are not entertaining no one so they are not doing sports because yeah. whatever they are doing it doesn't even have a every sport that exists exists and it has a name it has a federation it has members and we know it and it has competitions and, and everything and yeah. a league so um, when you are not doing sports if you are at home and you are doing a push-up. That's not sports. <laughs> and definitely that's not entertainment. No. It's for your own health and it's fitness and it's different. So um, this is, uh, I'm going to get a lot of uh, <laughs> stones thrown at me because of this. But that's why I think that the Ministry of Sports should not be in charge of uh, 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 fitness, fitness uh, yeah. uh, in general. Because... Um, because of so many reasons, yeah. uh, they, they, it's, a, it's a ministry that's very important that puts together many federations of many sports mm -hmm. and, and fitness because it doesn't even have like a representation at the, at the, is, a, at the, is an association. Yeah. So then we, we did not even dealt with, uh, uh, we did not even deal with, uh, with the Ministry of Sports. When you're opening, for example, if you want to open a gym, you go to RDB, you register your gym, you buy equipment, you open, yeah. and then like that. Yeah, that's, and then that's, they yeah. come in when it comes to regulation, when it comes to closing you for COVID regulations and stuff. Yeah. So I feel like there should be an entity mm -hmm. that's affiliated to the Ministry of Health yeah. in their preventive health care if they have it. Yeah. In this case, probably in the NCD department yeah. that looks into regulating and looking for compliance and, 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 and regulating uh, health facilities and, and, and fitness facilities. And those people can be the ones that actually establish the size of gyms. What kind of standards do you have to be in? What kind of professional ethics to follow? Mm -hmm. Do you have uh, qualified per personnel? Yeah. Do you, are you actually helping instead of causing more, more trouble because you, you and me are, are, are professionals in this area. You know how a bad trainer can cause more trouble than, than good. Uh, all those things should be actually overseed by an entity that's affiliated to the Minister of Health because it's a health matter, definitely not entertainment. Mm -hmm. And if we solve that one problem, then we, we, we will, even in the mind of people, they will start seeing fitness as what it is, as, as that personal thing that's yeah. very inclusive and that is not competitive. Mm -hmm. You can make it competitive if I organize a fitness competition and I want people, I pay people to do things together, looking for the winner, that's competitive. Yeah. But still, it's not a, a sport. It doesn't make it a sport. So it, it, I think the word comes from French or whatever, le sport, when you're doing whatever thing you're doing, it's I'm doing sports, I'm yeah. doing, I'm exercising. You hear people say, oh yeah, I'm a sportif, I do sports. But uh, um, yeah, if you are a sport, you should have a name and you should have a league and you should have a competition and you should have an association, all those things. And then you should be under the Ministry of Sports. Yeah. So, so yeah, what I'm getting from you is basically we really do need like a separate wing for preventative like health, basically, where, where you can... Um, um, you know, focus all of these things and maybe regulate them even better because right now, indeed, it's funny that you're saying that when you go register a gym, many of sports is nowhere to be found, yeah. right? Uh, only when you, when it comes to regulating, doing, you know, so, yeah. Regulations are good, that. but they need to be done by the 
uh, right body. But yeah, but right the right body people. indeed because yeah. you don't want someone who knows nothing. Because that's what I had indeed when yeah. people were coming to the gym to assess the things and then and you just this person they're asking you more questions like what is this? What do you do? What you know? And then you're like. I uh, ain't you supposed to be, you know, the one with <laughs> more. I just supposed to, yeah, yeah, yeah to be we, knowing about health and fitness. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. You should be know more, and then therefore and see if this fits in that category. Instead. They know about sports. Yeah, they just don't know about fitness. Yeah, exactly. As a minister of health, they are really knowledgeable in terms of sports stuff. Yeah. But uh, when it comes to dealing comes with to health fitness, and yeah. fitness, and it's, also, uh, yeah, it's yeah. a bit limited. And, and, it's, and, and it's a, a very controversial subject. I'm sure it's going to, to create yeah, trouble. <laughs> we, shall, but, we, yeah. we shall see how far that goes. Because yeah. because um, indeed, for someone who is like wanting to go deep into the fitness world and, and, yeah. and to make something great out of it, you know, it's, it's frustrating when you feel like you have no representation yeah. Uh, at the at the top board, or you you are being misplaced into another category where you feel like ah, that's not me, man. That's not me. Um, yeah. All right, so we're gonna make like a one eighty turn from here. Mm-hmm. Uh, we're gonna talk about marijuana. <laughs> <laughs> and I know it's it's, it's wow, it's, Theo. Yeah, it's 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 funny, and I, and I and I think it's also interesting to have uh, to talk about maybe marijuana as among you know people who advocate for preventive sports and you know for health. Yeah. Um, but I find, I mean, I mean, um, so for the people who don't know, Ronda recently uh, uh, announced that you, you can marijuana can now you can now basically uh, marijuana has been legalized under strict medical you know uh, a rule. So if you can, if you, if you get a prescription from a doctor, you can basically be prescribed marijuana for you know for cure. Um, can I can I can I interrupt you for sure. one second? I want I want to come back to your question. There's a question you asked about how do we go. Uh, from here with the elderly with the with the uh, grown-ups in Rwanda yes yes uh, not thinking positively about exercising and health in general uh-huh. um, I wanted to comment on that before we, we, we do your crazy 180 turn <laughs> um, um, yes and it's it's a big problem we we have um, a community of 45 years and above yeah that just doesn't train and if they are busy doing their everyday work of securing the the the, the ends the, the the bread um it is what matters the most mm-hmm. and then as they do so you can see that slowly slowly their biology started to be compromised mm-hmm. and then uh, uh you will see that uh, older people like 50 year olds you, when you call them or you want your mom or your aunt or whatever, they'll be like, uh, I'm not busy. I'm not busy. I'm not busy. Or my friend Kanaka is I have an uncle who gives me that. I, I don't call it an excuse because it's actually real every time he tells me that. But, uh, dude, this guy goes to so many barriers. I cannot even count. Every weekend he has like something. How old is he? He's 58. Okay. So what that tells me, and that it's a conversation that they probably don't have in that generation, is that their generation is dying. Yeah. So and it's uncomfortable to actually have it. Yeah. Because they all have these underlying conditions, mm-hmm. and each and every member of that age category knows what they have at the personal level. Yeah. They know if they take insulin. They know if they take hypertension pills. They know if they do this. They know. And I'm talking about like if you have your mom. And your dad, who is 58 and who is 60, they, if they are 100% clean, it's pure luck. Yeah. Because they come from a generation that did not have all these things we're doing with fitness. Uh, as, as, as It was a luxury at that time. It, it was existing, but not in Rwanda yeah. to the level where the everyday Rwandan can actually afford to go to, yeah, exactly. to exercise. So the knowledge was so low. Uh, the circumstances did not allow them to build a habit of exercise to a point where now they are paying the bigger price mm-hmm. so if you come let's say from burundi you have abused alcohol if you <laughs> yeah, if you come before. there are yeah yeah so these are the realities we have to lay it down as it is yeah and uh, and the truth is that they are the most vulnerable now during this pandemic mm-hmm. actually yeah. and the other truth is that they're the ones in the parliament and they are the ministers and they are the ones taking decisions Mm-hmm. So the thing I feel like um, 
how if i'm to answer your question of like how do we actually go forward with this mm -hmm. now uh, uh with 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 these people with a, a background that doesn't have exercise in it how do we get them to stop being conservative towards exercise and towards fitness in general yeah i feel like uh, i recently made a tweet that every parent at any given time can raise their hand about uh dying for their kids they can they are sure that i can die for my kids yeah but then it's not every parent that is sure that they can live a very healthy life for their kid yeah if if if, if you are 50 year old that has an 11 year old as a kid that kid needs a father mm -hmm. and that kid will have to marry and have their uh, kids and you need to be a grandparent but to be a in order to be a good grandparent you need to be there you need to be alive yeah. you need to be alive yeah. so if you have issues think about it think about that people now like we are in a, in a situation where we are using fitness to cure diseases mm -hmm. and we are preventing even more diseases mm -hmm. doing doing fitness so if you're already at the disease level if you already are contracted or you have like let's say type 2 diabetes or, or because that's reversible by the way we have many cases in the gym yeah uh, where you come and then uh, a couple of months later doing a, a good program with a good coach uh, uh, you go to your oncologist and then they are, I mean you go to your doctor and then there are no longer signs of uh, your diabetes yeah. or you were pre-diabetic and then all of a sudden because of lifestyle changes you are, you are now clean so we are actually curing not just preventing mm -hmm. and I feel like you have to, I'm, I'm addressing now to the people 40, uh, 50 year and above because they're the ones taking big decisions in, in, in all over Africa, not yeah. just in Rwanda. I feel like you have to think about your kids and then every policy you think you participate in yeah. or you, you sign on, if it doesn't help the person below you, then I feel like it's a failure because... It's, if it's something that, that, that is going to be implemented in 40 years and, and have an effect that is almost eternal and you won't be there, then it was not signed. You, you shouldn't uh, be, I don't know if it's being selfish in, in, in signing policies. Think about your kids. Think about their kids yeah. when you are doing all these things. And I feel like fitness falls in that category. And, and, and I feel like it's an area that... Um, uh, only when you are interested in that area, you get to be knowledgeable about it. And, and, and I feel like many people should really draw an interest for personal reasons so that it can help you personally. Yeah. And then once you know about fitness, you can actually help others by taking the right decisions if you are a, a leader mm. and, and leading people in a, in, a, in a... Because I see a very good example. I, I see uh, when... Uh, uh, we have people who are uh, in high-level government seats that come to the gym. Mm -hmm. And uh, you see their health. You see their faces. You see their smiles. You see the, yeah, their exactly. optimism towards life. You see how, like, everything is vibrant. Well, so, look, look, stay, staying, staying on that point, indeed, because if, if those people are the key, basically, to, to opening the pathways, or at least widening the pathways of fitness and, and making this things you know putting some covering bow in that thing um like what in what way can we then uh, like uh, basically what kind of campaigns what kind of ideas do you think that it would we would need to take to to get them involved because i do agree with you once they come into the gym yeah and they experience it then you can see it in their eyes that oh my god this is actually something that i really need yeah yeah and and once it, it's in, embedded in them like i really need this i think it will be easier for them to say like hey you also need that. Yeah. You, know, you also need that. Yeah. I need to sign up. I need to sign you all up yeah. for this thing. So what do we just give them like free, 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 free ticket to the gym? Because that doesn't that, no guarantee they will come. Yeah. Um, how do we involve them? Because they are the apparently the gatekeepers now. Yeah. I, I it's it's um, and again again of course it uh, it. it it differs uh, person to person. Yeah. So there are 50 year olds and 60 year olds that you talk to and they are really in check yeah. when it comes to fitness. Yeah, but those are the yeah. few. Those are they are, they are, it's a minority. Yeah, it's a minority. Yeah. And, and uh, when they are talking about like fitness, they talk about like really substantial stuff that make an impact. Yeah. 
And then you have others that understand it, that, that they read about it, but they really don't break, they don't know how to break it down to the individual level. Yeah. Because I feel like if you understand it and you should be living a life that proves that you understand it. Yeah. You know what I mean? You should bring it to your own household. Yeah. Get everybody to exercise, starting with yourself and then your wife and then uh, your husband and then your kids. Uh, uh, like that. So I feel like we, we, um, um, we people need to be a bit uh, uh, interested in areas that are not their areas of expertise. Yeah, but how do That's you get them That's a general interested? thing to yeah. say, I know, but then how do I, it's, I don't know, is it my job to, <laughs> to no. fix, to fix? <laughs> I'm not a policy maker. If I was in a position where I, 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 I make decisions, yeah. I, I I would I would no, I, would, I would make that Friday exercise count that yeah. corporate Friday thing. Yeah. People leave offices to go to exercise. Those who work for public offices, who sit in public offices, but again, uh, I mean, how many really exercise on that? Yeah, exactly. So, so yeah, if, but we need so, uh, so the reason why I, I would make it mean something. Yeah. And, uh, and, yeah. and and you see programs in in in, in corporates and in, and in and in public uh, offices. Uh, signing up employees now it's like almost mandatory their HRs are really yeah. conscious about about making uh, sure that they are like, members of a gym I feel like the same way that there is no follow up some of these um, you know high level seats position that people take they they, they you know um, they, they put them through certain health checks they give them free health care maybe because if you if let's say the you know if, if someone has a very important position, it is important that they stay there and they do it well. So yeah. therefore, it's in, it is in the vested interest of the thousands of employees under him, and maybe even on the country level, that that they are on their best on their best game, right? Yeah. So what I'm just saying, okay, we don't need to come up with a solution now or the answer right now. But basically, the quickest solution in the short term will be to get every CEO to come to the gym for at least three months, and then. And then from there on, have them the conversation of like, hey, this preventive, you know, fitness thing, what do you think about it now? Yeah. Because for now, they're sitting there in their good chairs. They, they, they used to be good at sports back in high school, back in university, but, yeah, you know. Yeah. Uh, now they're too busy. You now they're, they're too busy uh, and, 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 and what's or not. So I feel, like, I feel like it's just one of those things you need to taste it first before you start talking about it. Because people have been out of... Yeah, out of reach for a while, and and, yeah. and, and and it's hard to get them back. Yeah, you know what I think should be cool in the hiring process. I wish people the same way when you work in aviation, oh. when you are cabin crew, or when you are yeah. pilot, they keep your health in check. Yeah, I wish they could be considered like, uh, om o almost like first responders you yeah. know if you're a firefighter you need to stay in shape yes there's no firefighter with a big belly no yeah. how are you gonna get somebody out of a building that's burning yeah you need functional fitness that that, that to yeah. do the job you do listen i wish there was a, a, a standard test a mm -hmm. standard fitness test yeah for every employment even if you are like let's say we just hired an hr in mm. in an office yeah even if you are, we just had a front desk person, mm -hmm. like the entry level of every, any, any office. Yeah. Even if you are an executive, even like, I feel like when you get hired, you should pass a fitness test at least to, it can be used as a wake up call. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe the person passes or does not pass, but there should be a quota as like, if you don't get 60% of these no, ABCDs, this, this, yeah. you don't, you don't, your head, your brain, your, your, your intellect does, it's not enough yeah. if you're not physically actually, healthy. I actually like that idea. I think, I think there should be, let's just call it what it is. There should be like a fitness test yeah. for every uh, person who is in charge of other people or who is like overseeing something. Uh, yeah, yeah, important. Simple, yeah, yeah. And, because and, and, if you are, and, if you are in a good health, yeah, uh, physically and mentally, you know, and uh, and we, it's, it's, we should it's, we should call it like that because I think people respect tests for uh, you know first of all because these people who are in this very important position they got there by also doing lots of tests usually. Yeah, 
and uh, and it, it doesn't even have to be very sophisticated, but it should just be a good wake up call, like hey, like a basic thing. Yeah, like, can you run? How many how many push ups can you do in a minute? Yeah. Uh, can you run five miles without stopping? Exactly. Type of stuff. Like but, uh, those 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 small things, it should be something because we want them to to train for the test. You know, we mm -hmm. want them to to go to the gym and say like, hey, I have a new job position. Yeah. You know, and I'm gonna I have to run five miles again. Yeah. I did it like a year and a half ago for the last time. Yeah. But now I'm going to this new job. I need to, you know, then it needs to be a thing. Yeah. From there, where we can get them into that. But so the funny thing is, like you're saying, it. I mean, it's, it's all good ideas. And I remember I used to st to study about this. Uh, um, it has been done before in Western countries, and it always fails, mostly because the people who are at the top, top, are not feeling it. Mm -hmm. They don't require it. Yeah. Because if I'm your boss, if I put this, oh, hey, you need to do this, that somehow implies that I also need to do it. Yeah, yeah. I need to eventually... Yeah, yeah. And I don't want to do it, actually. <laughs> you understand? That's yeah. uh, like very no, simple. No, yeah. definitely. The culture of an institution, yeah. it comes from the boss. It comes from and, the boss. Yeah. And this and is this one, one, one of the great things that I like about Rwanda, because Rwanda is still like a small country in a way that the hierarchy is there, but it's... It's it's not as long and mundane as I've seen in other European countries where things have been like this for the last hundred years, for example. Yeah. Um, so I'm just thinking right now, if we could like talk to the president or something, you know, someone who's like at the top top, yeah, and get him on board, and like, hey, listen, what do you think about this, like fitness test for all of your ministers? Just you know. The, to, to get there, because I do feel we do we do need like an accelerator from coming from underneath, talking to your boss. Can we? You know, it's not. Yeah. Be there. It needs to come from from the top yeah, actually, yeah. and then spread through. Because I think if you put like a, a simple fitness test, uh, just alone the idea that you have to do a test will make you put on some 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 gym clothes and at least yeah. attempt something. You know, yeah. even if it's just like evening walks with your family around the neighborhood and then you know before you go to bed just something you know but yeah yeah you should, uh, it's a good idea by the way i i, I, I yeah I'll, the fitness test uh, is a good idea it, it, it is a for good corporates idea. and for for, yeah. for public for, exactly and people should be leading by example and um, and i think rwanda it has like a virgin economy i feel like there's still a possibility for that you know because, like, if you look like America, for example, there are multi-trillion companies right now where you cannot tell them shit, you know. Like, you cannot tell Bezos to do something he does not want to do. He has, yeah. like, too much. No, but the thing is that big big companies like that, and, 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 and they understand that even themselves, it's... Uh, I remember this video of uh, this Ugandan pastor. Do you remember that Ugandan ah, uh, big pastor who yeah, said yeah, that... I was saying, like, you should not be that, working out, you that, do... That this... Uh, yeah, like, <laughs> tell me a billionaire who is ripped or who is, yeah. Uh, like, yeah, Kanyama, I, I remember. <laughs> yeah, my friend Titina would be happy with this. Uh, uh, yeah, uh, it's, that shows you the culture, by the way, we have down here in Africa yeah. Yeah. Uh, to... Uh, where, like, actually grown-ups think that people who go... They, they have reduced fitness to, to stand in front of the mirror and pump your biceps. Yeah. And they feel like it's done by a 17-year-old and it's not something yeah. they should be doing. But, fitness is so broad. Fitness but, is so wide. Fitness is so but, many things. But real quick, I want to stay on that fitness test thing because yeah. you have now intrigued my mind and I cannot stop thinking about it now. Mm -hmm. Um... So, because I'm thinking, yeah, okay, imagine, we can, we know some people who have companies, right? They might have two employees, they might have 20 employees. We can yeah. maybe convince them, like, hey, we're making, like, a good package for you. You just, every new employee needs to do a fitness test. Yeah. And ex all existing employees must do one fitness test a year. I don't know. And we per periodically yeah. re renew that. Exactly. So, but, like, what should be the consequence, you think, then, for someone failing a fitness test? Because it will happen. Well, the thing is... Um, obviously, if you need the qualities of the person, if the person is a good fit for the position, yeah, let's say someone is obviously uh, good, they're doing their job, mm -hmm. but you know, yes, let's call him Charles. He has a yeah. belly. I mean, obviously, he, he's I not really been yeah. into the gym for a while, and all of a sudden, his boss is requiring him to do a fitness test. Yeah. But Charles is very important for the company because he's yeah. a CTO or whatever. Yeah, yeah. So obviously, because you can imagine where the fitness test will rank in terms of priorities. Yeah. So. Of course, they need Charis to know what they are doing. They need Charis to be a good team player. They need Charis to be ABCDs yeah. that, that are required, that are like priorities mm -hmm. before Charis is fit. That's yeah. why you see many Charises that are not fit, yes. but who are good at what they do. Exactly. But then when they lose their job because they get sick or because they, are, or because they can potentially die, 
the yeah. company loses that very variable charge. Yeah. But if you had really advocated so that you hire a charge that that's fit and that's uh, uh, sickness proof, mm-hmm. probably you could keep that charge for very long. And Charles could grow with the company. I know, but the, my, you, you, have, so, you have not answered my question. What should be the punishment? You think, like, you just brainstorm. We, we are punishment not if the, if Charles is already employed and and fails the test. Yeah, let's do I two scenarios. Like there sh- shouldn't be. There shouldn't be. Yeah, two scenarios is that probably the the company can be very serious about fitness and then say if you don't pass, you don't stay with us. Mm-hmm. That's scenario one. Okay. And or the company can say you do not pass, but then. What are you gonna do from now on? Because they should, they have QPI, uh, 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 KPIs, if yeah. uh, if that's correct, yeah. and they have uh, like goals and they have things that they sign. It's like you mean you go in a company. Yeah. Uh, then uh, uh, that charge or that employee can say uh, can be asked to do something about uh, that health uh, test that he failed. Yeah. Because fitness is a health test. It's not just fitness. Exactly, and 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 we they can sit the HR can sit with Charles and then say uh, you are very valuable to the company. Yeah, but then it's very important that we keep you alive. Yeah, but and let's let's say Charles indeed, because you know, so not everyone with a belly was gonna die tomorrow. But let's say Charles, because he has a belly, he's been growing for many years. So mm-hmm. now going to the gym for three months will not remove the entire belly. Mm. You know, let's say he tries, he fails, he tries, he. Because f- I'm looking basically for what is the bottom line. Uh, going to be because I'm thinking I'm thinking to, to be honest yeah companies have a very low bar they have as to as to how <laughs> yeah, yeah. it's, it's so, non-existent yeah, actually because because if it tells me something because if you this if we say okay now that uh, your issue has been diagnosed you Charles mm-hmm. uh, the company is actually supporting your change yeah uh, you're going to be eating healthy and you are now a member of Cali Fitness you're going to be training three times let's say with help or without help yeah uh, I mean there are uh, uh, supports mm-hmm. in, in in place for you to actually do better in your next physical test yeah um, then Charles goes and un- undergoes that transformational transformation plan yeah. program uh, Charles is going to do better next time yeah of course yeah, if everything is in place yeah. that that is uh, uh, in place to help him yeah but if Charles fails yeah. and then fails again either something is not working in the program yeah or Charles does not actually want to do better yeah that's where we now as a company you need to assess how low is your bar do yeah. we need to keep this charts yeah you see yeah. and uh because it tells you something on 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 the personal growth of a person it tells you something on on that's why the where do you see yourself in five years question uh comes into into play mm-hmm. uh it, it it what the reason why i said i i assume that they ask to people is that they want to see if they are uh uh people with dreams and people who aspire to become things and to yeah. grow. And if you want to grow, then that's probably the person I want because they are going to be working on personal goals as well as company goals because they feel like company goals are going to advance them personally yeah. to new heights. And, and, and if fitness is not important to you and you fail uh, regardless of all the help you've, prov- you've been provided, Mm-hmm. I feel like yeah, we we can review. Uh, is is our bar really that low to keep going uh, uh, that way, or yeah. or it's time we we look for a fitter yeah uh, church. Yeah, 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 that's true. Okay, it's, uh, well, it is an interesting concept indeed. Because I like I said, I remember when I was studying for this in the Netherlands when we are looking at company fitness and everything because they've tried right. People have mm-hmm. tried this before. Companies they install a whole basement full of the newest equipment and yeah. swimming pools. They give them the the deluxe memberships, the most deluxe gyms. And you know what they find? At the end of the day, the already fit people are the ones who take advantage of these opportunities. Yeah. The Charles with the bellies, they will, might take a membership. They might go there for one week, maybe one month at the most, but they will spend the rest of the career really not even touching yeah. any of those equipment. Uh, but being in Rwanda, it has kind of like revived those things and like, well, we don't have the culture here yet. So therefore, there's a chance of, of changing it indeed. Because I'm honestly thinking if you can convince the CEO here, like, hey, put your employees on a fitness test, you know, on a yearly, six months, quarterly, something. Yeah. Um, because it do be good for not 
just for your company, it would be good for them in general. Yeah. And I think you, your employees will perform better when they are fitter. Yeah. You know, that is actually almost a guarantee. And also because, you know, also of course, we have also another cultural shit, cultural issue here where people associate fitness of going to the gym with losing weight. Um, so therefore, the people who are like, let's say skinny, who have high blood <laughs> pressure, like, who have mental issues, who cannot sleep for shit, they they like ah oh, no I don't need gym you know I'm okay yeah, yeah. you know um, yeah. and 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 then we we, we skimp over them um, but I think this test might be something to be like okay even though you don't need to lose weight but yeah can you walk a flight of stairs and back without yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah. without collapsing so it can be a good thing for sure all right we're coming to the end but of course uh, one topic I wanted to talk about was the marijuana thing um, uh, uh, Rwanda has recently appro- approved the growth and the uh, and the distribution and the sale of uh, marijuana. Yeah. And um, so, as a health expert, like basically, how, how do you look at this move uh, by the Rwandan RDB? Well, personally, I feel like there's no problem in 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 in, in doing that. In fact, it's very long overdue. Yeah. And um, since we are following very, I mean. Uh, uh, I would say I was gonna say something that I wasn't sure if I want to say, <laughs> but yeah, I mean there are lots of um, uh, trends and and, and and CBD products and THC products are are, are among the uh, recent trends, and it's it represents really significant revenues to to. There are That's big true, industries yeah. now, so I don't know how the marijuana industry is now, but it must be big because I see a lot of. Uh, 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 CBD products and yeah, like there are these oils, there are these uh, cookies and stuff. But um, I feel like it's cool. It's it's good and it's uh, it, it's it it shows if if anything it shows how progressive Rwanda is getting and and it's really nice. And uh, yeah, regulations just come need to be um, very um, into. Yeah, very vigilant, and and they have to be vi- uh, regulations, and they are. I'm sure they are going to, to yeah, to do good with that. And uh, but you don't see it as a potential risk for deteriorating health of the population. Of uh, uh, I don't know really. I mean, if you if you, in what way? That's the thing. Directly, as somebody has actually gotten bad from a yeah. health perspective from smoking a joint or. Uh, or like third degree problems. Let's say you, I don't know. There no, are other things no, that people no, say. No, that directly, directly, because we are we are assuming that those are the people. By the way, up to this point, what the thing you the most important part you did not mention is that it's not for recreational purposes. Ah yes, yes, okay, yeah, uh, okay. Up to this point, it has been legalized for medical uh, purposes. And uh, I'm, I'm sure there will be institutions like uh, that are very limited that can prescribe uh, the use of marijuana. Is uh, I'm sure it's gonna be used in medical yeah uh, no, I was, uh, industry for uh, dealing with pain, for example, cancer yeah. people. Yeah, it's funny because, because I, 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 yes, I, I looked into it. It's basically it's going to it's going to be very strict. They're gonna treat it the same way they treat prisoners in America. Mm-hmm. It's gonna be locked. Gonna need. A, you're gonna need um, uh, surveillance 24/7. Mm-hmm. Even the transportation of it. Um, yeah. You're gonna get like a permit for only like a few, um, a few ye- five years, I think, at the at the most. Um, and then you you know you are you are uh, liable for like big punishments up to fifty thousand dollars if you you know if you don't follow the rules. So mm-hmm. it's 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 actually mm, it's very tight. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's, yeah. And also to to be. Uh, the person who applies for this uh, permit, you need to be some kind of PhD, yeah, yeah. established company with lots of money in the pocket to get started. Yeah, yeah. So uh, people should understand that it's not uh, this law is not going to make run that Jamaica land. <laughs> no, it will not. It will not. And, and like I said, I grew up in the Netherlands where it, everything was already legalized. And the biggest thing I learned from the from it, because uh, um, so when we were in the Netherlands, people would be asking us, "So you guys really smoke?" Weed everywhere. I'm like, yeah, you can just go into a shop and buy the way the same way you go and buy alcohol. Like that's why I asked the question because those are the questions I used to get. You know, that yeah. they're like bad for everyone, la la la. But I've really learned that it's not that bad um, uh, uh, because it's like alcohol basically. 
when it's there, it's there, and the people who people are responsible, and the majority of them, they use it in their own way. No one is now drinking themselves to death with alcohol just because you can buy it. Yeah, you know, if you just look at the numbers, like that's not how alcohol is being used. Uh, but anyway, I just find it very in, in, in an interesting development, and uh, I was wondering if people still have that health perspective towards you know. Marijuana, as it yeah. used to be, but apparently not. <laughs> um, but it's good then. Yeah. Then we'll, uh, we'll, we'll see how it develops. I'm just looking forward to it. Yeah. Um, anything else you would like to add about the current, you know, state health state of Rwanda as we come to Iraq? Yeah, I mean, um, it's good, and uh, I want to thank you for inviting me on this platform. Yeah, and, you're welcome, uh, man. So I will just use it to give a message <laughs> as a professional. Yeah. So I want people to not be discouraged by the lockdowns and whatever situation they are in that is limited at the moment. Yeah. Just keep moving. I yeah. want people to seek for uh, advices and, and, and Google stuff and YouTube has like a huge library of workouts. Yeah. Uh, go and, and, and contact your workout buddy and ask them what they are doing in this period and keep just moving because yeah. when you exercise the truth is that you stay sharp and you stay healthy and uh, you go through any tough time yeah that's true yeah that's true that's true so keep exercising all right ivan thank you very much uh, wait 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 me, me, me. thank you very much for watching guys this was yet another uh, uh, episode second episode i hope i hope you enjoyed um if you like uh, what you're seeing here don't forget to give this video a like uh, and a comment share us your experience and if you have any inputs on the topics we had today uh you yeah, know share it with us i'm always kind of curious to see what other people take of it and uh you can find also ivan's contact in the description of this video and i'd like to see you on the next one all right bye bye yes yeah. Okay, Ivan, uh, forgot we already are uh, unpacking, but I have a present for you Okay. as a, as a guest, something that I'd like to do, yeah. but also mostly because we're in July and I know it's going to be your birthday soon. Okay, uh, so, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So this is like a, a, a birthday present as a slash a guest present, yeah. and I hope you like it. Good. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. I'll this, see. This is for you. Nice, nice. Cool. Nice. Thank you. Yeah. Enjoy. I will enjoy it. And uh, drink responsibly, I would say. I will try. And <laughs> happy birthday. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Good, good.